what's the high holiday coming up tonight? They haven't told me. You know the holiday is coming up tonight? No. Give me that Leviticus 23. How long you been in? You've been hearing about this truth for a while. How long you been in this truth? Three years. Three years. How long you been hearing about this truth? About four years. Four years. He knew about the Day of Atonement. You didn't know about the Day of Atonement, brother? He's from where? <laughs> GMS torture. GMS torture? That's what I learned. That's what you learned. Okay. But let me ask you this. Did I pay you to come out here? Did any brother here pay you to come out here? Because there's a lie all through the internet that we paid some dude from that clown camp to go to come up here. What the hell is this? Read that Leviticus 23. Leviticus chapter 23, verse 26. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Also on the tenth day of this seventh month. Because we're in the seventh month. And the tenth day begins tonight. Go ahead. There shall be a day of atonement. A day of atonement. Go ahead. It shall be a holy convocation unto you. Stop. What does the word convocation mean? Separate. What? Separate. No. No. Convocation means a gathering, assembly. You understand? A holy convocation means Israel is supposed to come together. You understand that? Go ahead. And ye shall afflict your souls and offer an offering made by fire. What does it mean to afflict your soul? How about you? What does it mean to afflict your soul? Okay, give me that Isaiah 58. I think it's verse 3. 3. Yep. This is going to explain what it means to afflict your soul. You brothers, and then you're going to give me Hebrews 5. Go ahead, read it. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 3. Wherefore have we fasted? Wherefore have we fasted? Mm. Say thee, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? Wherefore have we afflicted our souls? To afflict your soul means to fast. Now give me Jonah about what it means to fast. Do you know what it means to fast? What? No eating, no drink. What do you say? You agree with that? Okay, give me that. Jonah, was it three? Verse five to eight. Yeah, five to eight. Come the on. book of Jonah, chapter three, verse five. So the people of Nineveh believed God and proclaimed a fast and put on sackcloth from the greatest of them even to the least of them. For word came unto the king of Nineveh and he arose from his throne and he laid his robe from him. Now many people ask, why did Jonah go to Nineveh? Because Nineveh was the capital of the Assyrian Empire. The reason Jonah went to Nineveh was because you had the northern kingdom. The northern kingdom, even from on down, that was taken into captivity in Nineveh. Read. And he laid his robe from him and covered him with sackcloth and sat in ashes. And he caused it to be proclaimed and published through Nineveh by the decree of the king and his nobles, saying, Let neither man nor beast turn nor flood. Here come. Taste anything. So when you fast, you're not supposed to taste anything. Read. Let them not feed nor drink water. Neither feed nor drink water. Go ahead. But let man and beast be covered with sackcloth and cry mightily. That was it. So now, this evening begins the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement is a holiday, high holiday, that God gave to our people. What's your name? You got an arm. Um. You got an Ishmaelite name? What is it? Jamal. Well, Jamal, you got to fix that. Okay. And what's your name? Shabar. Shabar? Oh, Shamar. Shamar? Means to what? Watch? Watch. And you gotta get your name fixed. But that's okay. You're still in the. But it's been three years, brother. After three years, you gotta get it together. You understand? All of you brothers must come together and learn this truth and help raise up our people. Because our people's in a low state. A very low state. You understand that? So now, Hebrews 5 and 12. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12. 4. When for the time he ought to be teachers. Like you brothers, you've been in three years, he's been in four years. That's the time because Christ dealt with the disciples 
only for like three years. After that, what did he do? He was gone. They was upset. Teaching, right? Go ahead. Ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. You know why you brothers got to be taught again? Because you have to learn about Christ. Meaning, what do I mean by that? You got to learn how to love your neighbor. You got to learn how to love the Most High God. You got to learn to apply the two greatest commandments. You understand that? Get me that in 1 John 3, 15. Like the camp you come from, okay? It's filled with hatred. I'm going to tell you straight. They hate their women. They hate their people. They hate me. But I don't give a damn. I'm going to tell you what the law says. Read that. 1 John chapter 3, verse 15. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. So your camp is a camp of murderers. Read. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. And your camp will not inherit eternal life. I'm going to tell you straight. Do we love them? Yes, we love them. But they must repent and love their neighbor as they love themselves. Give me Proverbs 25 and 9. I think, is that the one debate? Proverbs 25 and 9. Is that the one I want? Uh, the one about debate, debate something. Read that. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 9. Here's a famous scripture that brothers, unlearned brothers pull all the time. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. Let's read the verse above it and read that. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 8. Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof. Meaning, if I got an issue, I'm not supposed to run to you quickly to strive and fight about it. Go ahead. When thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. Because your neighbor can put you to shame. That's why it says, don't be hasty to strive, to fight. Go ahead. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. Debate your cause with your neighbor himself. Is this talking about argue scriptures, or is this talking about if I got a problem with you? It's talking about arguing with the scriptures. No, read from verse 8 again. Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof, when thy neighbor hath put thee to shame. This is talking about you have a problem with your neighbor. A problem with your neighbor, right? Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. Read it again. Go not forth. No, nine. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. Why does it say debate it with him himself? Because it's a problem you got with him. You understand? I'm going to give you the precept and help you out. Matthew 18 and 15. Here's the precept. Because a lot of you young men have been miseducated by these false camps, weak, unlearned camps. Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against me, go and tell him his fault between thee and him alone. Go, if I got a problem with you, I got to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. But now, if he don't want to listen to me, or I don't want to listen to him, if he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. So if we wait, if I talk to you and we get squashed the problem, I've won you as a brother. Man. But if he will not hear thee, but if you will not hear me, if I will not hear you, then take with thee one or two more. You take one or two more. Go ahead. That in the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word may be established. Now what you got to remember, brother Shamar, Sh Shamar, this is talking about problems. Let's say I stole something from you or took something from you unjustly. You say to me, yo, you did that. I said, no, I didn't. You're going to bring some witnesses. And then me and you discuss the matter of what happened. You understand? That's how God has it set up for the black community to elevate themselves. That's right. Go ahead. And if he shall neglect to hear them. And if I still don't want to hear you and your witnesses about the personal issue. Tell it unto the church. Now it goes before Israel. Go ahead. The but, judges. But if he neglect to hear the church, let it be unto thee as an heathen man and a publican. Now go back to Proverbs 25 and 9. This is the precept. The book of Proverbs chapter 25, verse 9. Go ahead. 
Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself. Debate your cause with your neighbor himself. The cause is you offended me or I offended you. Something personal. Go ahead. And discover not a secret to another. This is the proof. And discover not a secret to another. I told you something or you told me something and I revealed it. It says you're to debate your cause with me yourself. Listen, brother, why'd you reveal that? Me and you sat down like brothers talking. Now you got that, 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 that. You understand? Read it again. Debate thy cause with thy neighbor himself and discover not a secret to another. Lest he that heareth it put thee to shame and thine infamy turn not away. Because everybody gonna hear about it. So now, here's the proof that that's not talking about the scriptures. Where in the Bible did Christ run around from the Pharisees to the scribes and argue with them? Where did he chase them down and argue? It's not in the Bible. So when you see these camps doing that, they're not following the Bible at all. That's all for vainglory, okay? Give me that Philippians two, uh, it might be two, it might be one of them. Some teach Christ, or oh, you know what I want. What I'm gonna show you, uh, you look for it, let's look for it, is that in Israel, in this truth, 115. 115, thank you, 115. Philippians chapter one, verse 15. Some indeed preach Christ even of envy and strife. Some brothers only teach this Bible, Shabbat Shema, listen, for envy and strife, right? And some also of goodwill. Some teach the Bible of goodwill because if you're teaching of goodwill, you're not worried what the next man's saying. You understand? He got a job to do, you got a job to do. I got a job to do. We're all members of one body, working together for the same cause, the same mission. Read. The one preached Christ of contention. Contention means argumentative. Everything is always an argument. I hate y'all, and this and that, I wanna kill. This is crazy. Jesus Christ, Yahweh Shai, did not do that. Read. Not sincerely. Not what? Sincerely. Not sincerely. Go ahead. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. Supposing to add affliction to my bonds. You know what that means? Some people was teaching thinking they were hurting Paul. I got more followers than you, Paul. I'm doing this, Paul. Well, all praises to the Most High. Watch, read that. But the other of love, knowing that I... What is love? But the other teachers of love, what is love? Why do you say it's keeping the commandments of love? I read it somewhere in the scripture. You read it somewhere? What did you say? <laughs> you say the same thing. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Because First, you're right. You're absolutely right. First John chapter 5, verse 3. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. So am I keeping the commandments if I say to you, Sh Shamal, I hate you. I want you dead. That's straight up hatred. That's why the white man calls our people niggas. Because you got the greatest book in the world in your hand. And the best you can do is show hatred for your people? Are you kidding me? You will walk by drug dealers. You walk by churches that teach the image of the beast. You walk by prostitutes. And you come to a brother teaching the Bible and say, I hate you. That's ignorant, one on one. Okay? Any confusion? You understand that, Shamal? I pray you do, brother. What does, I got a question. What does repentance mean? Huh? Coming back to the heavenly father, asking forgiveness for your sins. Okay, give me that. Proverbs 28, is it 13? Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. This ain't good. You? He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. He that covers his sins. What does it mean to somebody that covers their sins? What does that mean? Lying. Lying? What do you say? Cover your sins. What is it? Hiding your sins. Hiding your sins? Get me Ecclesiasticus 32.17 in the apartment. This is what it means. Y'all look very close. This is what it means to cover your sins. Ecclesiasticus chapter 32 verse 17. A sinful man will not be reproved. A sinful man will not be reproved, mean corrected. But 
findeth an excuse according to his will. But finds an excuse according to his will. Back to Proverbs 20. So to cover your sins means you make excuses for it. Go ahead. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins. Meaning shall, he that makes excuses for his sins. Shall not prosper. You shall not prosper means you shall not shema inherit the kingdom. That's the prospering God's talking about. Read. But whoso confesseth and forsaketh them. But you must confess your sins like tonight is the night, the day of atonement. When we enter into this fast, we must go before the Most High and confess our sins. You understand that? All that we've done, don't leave nothing out. No matter how bad it is, just tell the Most High and ask Him for mercy and forgiveness. Read. And forsaketh them. Then we got to forsake these sins. Give them up. Shall have mercy. Shall have mercy. Here's my next question. Can we deal with prostitutes according to the Bible? Can we deal with prostitutes according to the Bible? No. Why do you say no? Because your camp, GMS, has taught videos. It's okay to deal with prostitutes. And they have taught because of something Judah did in the Old Testament, in Genesis. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I'm familiar with that. You're familiar with it. So are they right or are they wrong? Okay, Corinthians 6. 2 second Corinthians 6, I think, or first. You know what I want to say. 6.15. Come, Come on, 6.15. Listen good. 1 Corinthians 6.15. Thank you. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 15. Know ye not that your bodies are members of Christ? All your bodies are members of Christ. You are Israelites. Your bodies are members of Christ. Read. Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of an harlot? Shall you take your body and join to a harlot? A harlot is a prostitute. Right? God forbid! What's the answer? God forbid! What does that mean, Shalom? No. It means no. What are we reading? The New Testament, the New Covenant. That's why Hebrews said when it comes time that you ought to be teachers, you must be taught again. <clears throat> you got to learn properly in Christ. Now, I don't know if Christ offends you. You want me to say Yahweh Shai? Maybe that's better for you. Because many people get upset with English. You okay? Do you get upset with English? No. Okay, so, for example, let me say this. Uh, Hamashiach, right? Hamashiach, wa, Hamashiach, hawa'a, shakor. What is that? I don't fully know the Hebrew. I'm going to admit it. I don't fully know the Hebrew. Okay. I say, yeah, so, now, you understand, you don't understand what I just said, right? You don't understand. All I said, very simple, the Messiah is black. Hamashiach, hawa'a, shakor. The Messiah is black. Very simple. But... Many people get stumbled over language. You understand that? Isaiah, get me Acts 2. And I want verse 8. Acts 2, verse 8. The book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 8. And how hear we, every man, in our own tongue, wherein we were born. So now, Shema. This is Acts, chapter 2. Shema, look at me so I know you listen. Acts, chapter 2. The disciples are teaching Israel. What language are they teaching Israel in? Oh, read it again. Listen good. And how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Read on. Parthians. He's going to name the languages. And Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia. Phrygia and Pamphylia. So all those countries that he's named that the Jews came from, were they speaking Hebrew? No, they were not speaking Hebrew, right? In Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak. We do hear them speak in our tongues. In our tongue. How come, Shema? The disciples were not teaching them in Hebrew. Exactly, exactly. So when they taught, read on, read on. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So they, when they were teaching Shema, they were teaching in the languages they understood. If I ask anybody out here, what is Yahweh Shai? Do you think they understand? No. So it's very unlearned. 
Shamal, for brothers to say, you got to teach Hebrew. That's a lie, according to the Bible. You can know Hebrew, Shamal, it's fine. But you cannot say you must teach it. They don't know Hebrew. Just like the little Hebrew I said to you, you didn't know it. It's crazy. It's just another reason. How can I hate you? Oh, oh, you said Christ. You don't say the Holocaust. I hate you now. Are you for real? It's saying, it's saying the wonderful works of God. How would they understand that it was the wonderful works of God? Because they were giving it to them in the language that they, they understood. You see that? In other words, if it was only coming out in Hebrew, and it was only meant to come out in the Hebrew, how did it say that it was the wonderful works of God? Read that last verse again, the last verse you just read. Preaching the Arabians, we do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So they heard the wonderful works of God in the languages that they were born in. Exactly. And that's the point. Guess what that'll do, Shamar? If we all understood that, Israel could come together. But you know what? What we do as a people, I look for a reason to hate you, to cause that separation. That's why I get Zephaniah 2 and 1. But this is why this is hard to come to pass. Because you got terrible leaders out there in Israel who don't understand. Read that. Zephaniah chapter 2 verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Ye, gather together, O nation that desire. You hear what the prophecy says? Gather yourselves together. Shema, what does that mean? Come together in unity. That love. And get Ephesians 4. That's right. Exactly. Ephesians 4 and 3. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. Endeavoring to keep the unity in the bond of peace. Why is it so hard for some of these Israelite leaders to comprehend that? They're like bloods and crip leaders. But they, they look for reasons to hate and cause division. Christ was not like that. When you read in the book of Revelation, there were seven major churches, right? They were not all, they were teaching the same thing, but they each had problems that Christ had to go to each church and correct. But guess what? They still had their love one for another. Why, why is it so hard for black people? Why, Shamal, you tell me, why is it so hard? No unity. Yes. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. In unifying the nation of Israel, we must speak the same thing. If we come with one group says, oh, you can rape, you can rape, you heard that one, you can rape little girls. That's insane, brothers. Right, right. That's insanity. Rape, do you have a daughter? You got some of these same men that got daughters. If you want to rape somebody, you start with your kid then. That's how evil it is. It's evil. And we get no respect because of bad leadership. Bad elders. Whatever titles they got now, look, cover titles. We must come together in peace, love, and unity. That's what the Bible says. And the day you brothers accept that, the better off we'll all be. The closer we will be. Give me that. Romans 13. And then knowing the time. <laughs> the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 11 and that knowing the time that now it is high time to wake out of sleep it's time to wake out of sleep come on for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe you know why all the salvation is nearer because we're starting to understand better how to love one another how to deal with one another it's going to say that as we read down read the night is far spent, mm -hmm. the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Casting off the works of darkness means our sins. The hatred we have within us, we gotta cast it off. Go ahead. And let us put on the armor of light. What is the armor of light? What is the armor of light? The truth. The truth, what is that? The word. You mean Jesus wept? Jesus wept. That, if I put that on, I'm good. Jesus wept. Be, be clearer with me, Shemal. I'm going to help you. Give me Proverbs 6 and 23. This is the armor of light. Keyword light. All right. Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. You hear that? The law is light. Go back to Romans. Read that same precept. The book of Romans chapter 13, verse 12. 
the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. So what is the armor of light? Huh? The commandments. What is the armor of light? That's what we all must put on. That's the armor. Not all these deep, uh, deep, uh, who are the three kings uh, in Daniel 11 and 1? Who are the four East Indian kings in the... Come on, read on. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Read. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in rioting. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Like the, what's the parade they had on Eastern Parkway, Labor Day? That is all about rioting and drunkenness. God says don't walk like that. Read. Not in chambering and wantonness. Chambering means partying, wantonness means sexual immorality. Read. Not in strife and envying. What does strife mean? What does strife? God says don't walk Fighting. in strife. Fighting, arguing. He says don't do that. Why cannot black men come together in God as Israel and come together in the love of unity. It's so hard. We're filled with strife and envy. Yep. Read. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Putting on the Lord Jesus Christ or Yahweh Shai means putting on the laws. And you love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's what that is. Read. And make not provision for the flesh. Don't make provision for the flesh. Means the flesh is another word there for sin. Don't make excuses for sin. Go ahead. To fulfill the lust thereof. To fulfill the lust thereof.